Welcome back to the Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane, Chapter 25. There are a lot of vocabulary words to go over in this chapter that I think will help us understand what's happening. The first is the word bane, which is an adjective. It's the opposite or an antonym of the word humble. When you're vain, you are very proud of your appearance and you like to talk about your appearance and bask in your appearance often. So this is a great example of someone who's doing something that shows you that they might be vain. To reinforce is a verb and it can be used in a couple of different ways. Reinforce means to encourage something or to give support to or strengthen. So in this little picture, this man is reinforcing the great work that the child is doing by telling him, great job, good job there. He's reinforcing that great behavior that the child has shown. In the other picture, we have a carpenter reinforcing a structure. So he's putting in more nails to make something stronger that he's building. When you purchase something, you are buying it. So purchase is a verb, which means to buy. Impassioned. You can see a root word in impassioned, the word passion, which you should know when you show passion, you're showing something very strongly. You've got an emotion that you feel very, very strongly. And impassioned is an adjective that means you are showing or feeling very strong emotions. Considerable is an adjective to describe something that is large in size, amount, or quantity. Mrs. Cadis could say that for Valentine's Day, I got a considerable amount of chocolate. So it means that I got a large amount. Vacant is an adjective used to describe something that is empty. So if someone moves out of the house next door to you and no one else moves in, that house is vacant. There also might be a vacant spot on a shelf. Like right now in a lot of the stores, there are vacant spots where toilet paper and paper towels used to be. So vacant means it's not used, filled, or lived in. It's empty. Contrarian. The word contrarian is an adjective to describe a person who takes an opposite or different opinion from other people. So if I said chocolate is the best dessert on the planet, you might be a, con a contrarian and say, no, 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 apple pie is the best. So when you have an opposite opinion, then you, are, you could be called a contrarian. And our last word is immobile. The word mobile means that it can move around. Sometimes we talk about mobile devices. Those are things like your phone that you can walk around with and use anywhere. Whereas a computer that's plugged into the wall is immobile. You can't walk around with it outside and use it anywhere. So immobile means unable to move. It's an adjective to describe an item that is unable to move. Like this gentleman is immobile because he's been tied up. All right, let's see how these words come to life in chapter 25 of Edward Tulane. Technically, of course, he was not alone. Lucius Clark's shop, Lu Lucius Clark's shop was filled with dolls. Lady dolls and baby dolls, dolls with eyes that opened and closed and dolls with painted on eyes. Dolls dressed as queens and dolls wearing sailor suits. Edward had never cared for dolls. He found them annoying and self-centered, twittery and vain. This opinion was immediately reinforced by his first shelf mate, a china doll with green glass eyes and red lips and dark brown hair. She was wearing a green satin dress that fell to her knees. What are you? She said in a high-pitched voice when Edward was placed on the shelf next to her. I'm a rabbit, said Edward. The doll let out a small squeak. You're in the wrong place, she said. This is a shop for dolls, not rabbits. Edward said nothing. Shoo, said the doll. I would love to shoo, said Edward, but it is obvious that I cannot. After a long silence, the doll said, 
I hope you don't think that anyone is going to buy you. Again, Edward said nothing. The people who come in here want dolls, not rabbits. They want baby dolls or elegant dolls such as myself. Dolls with pretty dresses. Dolls with eyes that open and close. I have no interest in being purchased, said Edward. The doll gasped. You don't want someone to buy you, she said. You don't want to be owned by a little girl who loves you? Sarah Ruth, Abilene, their names went through Edward's head like the notes of a sad, sweet song. I have already been loved, said Edward. I have been loved by a girl named Abilene. I have been loved by a fisherman and his wife and a hobo and his dog. I have been loved by a boy who played the, the harmonica and by a girl who died. Don't talk to me about love, he said. I've known love. This impassioned speech shut up Edward's shelf mate for a considerable amount of time. Well, she said at last, still, my point is that no one is going to buy you. They did not speak to each other again. The doll was sold two weeks later to a grandmother who was purchasing her for a grandchild. Yes, she said to Lucius Clark, that one right there, the one with the green dress, she is quite lovely. Yes, said Lucius. She is, isn't she? And he plucked the doll from the shelf. Goodbye and good riddance, thought Edward. The spot next to the rabbit stayed vacant for some time. Day after day, the door to the shop opened and closed, letting in early morning sun or late afternoon light, lifting the hearts of the dolls inside, all of them thinking when the door swung wide that this time, this time, the person entering the shop would be the one who wanted them. Edward was the lone contrarian. He prided himself on not hoping, on not allowing his heart to lift inside of him. He prided himself on keeping his, silent, his heart silent, immobile, closed tight. I'm done with hope, thought Edward Tulane. And then one day at dusk, right before he closed the shop, Lucius Clark placed another doll on the shelf next to Edward. Hmm. We'll have to see what that doll is like and what it means. Poor Edward, it seems like he's been through so much that now he's not willing to have hope. The story is telling us that all of the other dolls look forward to customers coming in, hoping that those customers will buy them. But Edward, it says, was the lone contrarian. He prided himself on not hoping, on not allowing his heart to lift inside of him. He prided himself on keeping his heart silent, immobile, and closed tight. I'm done with hope, he says. And after all he's been through, who can blame him? Every time he finds someone to love, or who loves him, he just gets tossed away or left behind or broken. And he probably doesn't want to go through that again with his heart. So we'll see if he does find just the right person who will take care of him next. <laughs>